Howard, thank you for joining me today. Today, uh, it's been a, it's been a while. How you been? I'm great, Omar. It's been way too long. So we we got to make this a little bit more frequent occurrence to to be of more value for you and your audience. Thank you. Uh, I know. I mean, when I first heard this, I have to admit it definitely went over my head, and I think that's probably why I was hesitant to like keep continuing the conversation because it is kind of like a far out there concept and almost sounds a little too good to be true but the more I slowly look into it I was like okay there is some there is a strategy here that I think more people should know about agreed agreed and it's just one of those it, it takes time and unfortunately even for my clients I always tell them there's just an element of faith to start until it's your numbers and you're about three months in and then all of a sudden you're like oh now i see this this makes total sense <laughs> that must be a good feeling so quickly or look, we met at a networking event some time ago and then you told me you were a dentist at one point and just take it from there leading us up how you got into this business yeah i mean it, I'll summarize this in about 60 seconds. So yes, I was a dentist. I was in the Navy first, and I know that you were a serviceman as, as well, so thank you for being a veteran. Um, I got burnt out with dentistry. And then in May of 2018, my older son nearly died from appendicitis that turned septic. He did not, everything worked out fine, but it was the wake up call to say, life's too short, you hate what you're doing, get out. And because of, what I call now the new rules of finance, I had this weird fluke where my house payment got down to $24.19. And I showed it to another dentist because I was having lunch with him as I'm getting out. He's like, I see it. I don't understand how you can have a $24 house payment. I'm buying a condo next month. You have to be my coach. Okay. He was going to do the 30 year mortgage. He paid off the condo in eight months. And so he tells his business partner, I tell a friend of mine, all of a sudden now I finally listen to my heart and it's like, this is what you're here to do, is teach people the, these new rules of finance and most importantly, the system around it so that they can get to their freedom sooner. But most importantly is I am here to act as a guide because there's a fair amount of stuff on the internet. As Omar said, it sounds too good to be true. And if you don't understand the nuances of this, you can get in trouble. And my goal is not to get people in trouble. Mm. All right. So with that, I'm going to play us a video that kind of paints a nice little picture about what we're talking about. All right. There we are. Let's play it. Here's how you pay off your home in five to ten years. And I'm going to explain it like you're in kindergarten. So normally what you do when you buy a home is you go to the bank and you say, hey bank, I wanna buy this home. And the bank gives you what's called a mortgage, okay? So now for the next 30 years, you and your, you and your spouse are gonna to have to make this mortgage payment and then the rest of your money or a portion of your money is gonna to go towards monthly expenses, food, gas, utilities, et cetera. And then whatever you save, these surplus dollars, they're gonna go into a savings account. Now, you could also say they go into an investment account. For simplicity, we're talking to a kindergartner. It just goes into a savings account. But there's another way to finance the same home that will only take five years. So what you do is you go to the bank and you say, hey, bank, can you give me a loan, but I want a HELOC instead of a mortgage? And they say, sure, we'll give you 90%. And you say, hey, bank, can I only get like 10 or 20% of a HELOC? And the bank says, typically, but if it's in the first position and there's no mortgage and the entire value of this real estate is securing this loan, we'll give you 90% of the value of this home. So then what you do to pay it off faster is you drive 100% of your income into this loan and that pays down the balance. Now, why do we want to drive 100% of our income? Because this is a simple interest loan and that means that it calculates interest daily based off the average daily balance. So we want the lowest amount, uh, we want the lowest balance possible in this loan, but we still have to pay for expenses. Remember, we just put 100% of our income towards paying down our home. 
So what we do is because a HELOC is like a two-way street, money can flow in, money can flow out. So what we do, so what we do to pay for our expenses is we just write a check out of the HELOC and that's going to pay for the monthly expenses because remember, HELOC is like a two-way street. Money can flow in, money can flow out, which is the core principle that allows us to put 100% of our income towards paying down the balance of our home and then take out whatever we need safely in order to pay for our expenses. So let's say that mom and dad make $10,000 a month and then they spend $6,000 a month. So the $4,000 a month they don't spend or the income is what then pays down this balance. And that's how you can pay your home off in five to 10 years much more efficiently than if you were to do this with the mortgage. Because with the mortgage, if you put 100% of your money in, you would not be able to pay for your monthly expenses. This guy, Jeffrey, he did a fantastic job in explaining how I help people, okay? So I have zero issue in terms of how he explained the overall concept because it's 100% true. Let me try a different way to convey the same concept though because I have done it this way and then there are times that I just have to pivot and explain it a different way and people are like, oh, now I get it, okay? So every time that you're making your mortgage payment, you are sending a payment into a titanium safe, right? You put the money in, you can't get the money back out. And that is because this has been set up as a one-way tool. Now let's go back to the economy. Another word for money is currency. Why do they use the word currency? because the money has to move. For the economy to work, the money has to be in motion, it has to flow. So when you go back to 2008, 2009, when the banks started not to trust each other in terms of their assets, and remember, a, an asset to a bank is a loan. When they started to see all these fog and mirror mortgages weren't working, then all of a sudden there was a lack of trust and a lack of exchange, a lack of trade, a lack of movement of money and the economy crashed. So now let's fast forward to COVID. March of 2020, it wasn't the economy, it wasn't the banks that screwed things up. Now it was governments all around the world literally shutting down the entire globe. But the governments were smart. They saw what happened 12 years ago and said, we ain't having this again. But they also know most people are broke. So what did they do? I don't care where you are politically. The one thing that they got right is we have to force money into people's hands so that the money keeps circulating. Because if not, we're going to have a we're going to have a recession beyond recession part 2. Probably worse than what the Great Depression was. Okay? So now think about your own economy. The largest purchase for most people is going to be their house. And so what has the banking system set up? This one-way street, this titanium safe, you put the money in, you can't get the money back out. And so what you have to do and what he was explaining in the video is that you now have to silo your money into a checking account, into a savings account, into a money market. But remember, you stop moving the money, the bank now takes it and moves it for their own benefit. What he has shared and what I share with the people that work with me is we have the key to now open the safe. And so now we can take all our money back, bring it to us, and now we can move all the money within our own economy. That's what we're doing. It's that simple, okay? It's just that the concept is so far into what we have been taught that people are like, there's no way this can work. And the answer is, yeah, once you understand the basic math behind it, it, it's not hard. It's just the mindset shift to say, you can really do this? Yeah, you can. Mm. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to go back to that screen so we can take a look at some of those comments because I think that's where we're going to find some really good pain points that people just want to know more about. 
Can are you able to to see some of that on the right hand side there? A little bit. Sorry if it looks if I look weird in the screen. I'm just trying to read some of this. Okay, perfect. A little bit scary to me. Oh wow. Okay, because the interest rate is higher and variable. The answer is yes. Okay, so this person, Ellen, fair. It's a fair point. Okay, but let's go back to me and my personal journey with this with my own house. In 2021, when interest rates were still low, my average house payment was $350 a month. When I had my mortgage, I think it was around $2,000. Okay, so I had that fixed payment of $2,000 a month, month in, month out, because I had the titanium safe. But now when I moved to a HELOC, and I did this back in 2018, my payment was $350 a month on average in 2021. In 2022, even with all the increases in the interest rate, okay, because again, this is a variable rate. When the Federal Reserve says we're raising rates, the rate's going to go up on me. When the Fed lowers rates like they did March of 2020, it was rock bottom. It was cheap as dirt. Okay, but even with all of the increases in 2022, my average house payment was $500. In 2023, when the interest rate was high, my average house payment was $600. And Omar, I'll just ask you, which is easier to pay? A variable payment of $600 or a fixed payment of $2,000? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. The variable okay. is $600. Right. And so I'm not saying anything in terms of paying the debt down. I'm just saying, and this is, and this is where people get held up, is that they're like, well, I got to pay the debt down. No. Realistically, what you're trying to do is survive month after month. You don't care if you're paying the debt down. You're just wondering, like, what's my budget this month? Do I have enough money come in to, to cover the budget? That's what you're really looking at. And so people just get so hung up in terms of it's all about the interest rate. It's all about the interest rate. That's the magic trick, guys. That's the, that's David Copperfield right there. Here's the interest rate. Let me give you a low, let me give you a low interest rate, and you have no idea how the math is working. Hmm. So even because I, go ahead. Yeah, because you're around plenty of real estate. You have helped people purchase new homes. Right now, interest rates are what, around 7%? Yep, low sevens. Okay. okay. What's the average selling price in Austin right now? Call it 450000 Okay. So do you know what their monthly payment is? Mm, no. Okay. On 450000 I'm guessing it's going to be about $2,600, 2700 a month. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm totally spitballing here, but I can't be that far off. Go look at go look at the it's called an amortization table. What is that convenient payment for the next 360 months? So that by the time 30 years is done, you have now paid off the home. If you look at those first 12 payments, about 20% of that $2,700 is going to pay the balance down. So let's just call it $500 is actually going to pay off the 450000 and you have $2,200 as interest. That's the money to the bank. That is an 80% interest rate, even though the stated interest rate is 7 That is worse than going to a pawn shop, and it's totally legal. And that's where people get messed up because they just... But my payment's 2700 bucks, and I've got a 7% or two years ago, I got a 3% interest rate. Look at the breakdown of the math. How much of your payment's actually going to pay the balance down? It's a lot less than you think. Yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've seen those tables where the first decade almost, you're paying so much towards the interest instead of the principal. And yeah, if you look at it in that detail, a big chunk of that, is all interest and yeah 80 percent. that's i never looked at it that way yeah so even when interest rates were down at three percent it was still 70 percent of that payment was to interest yes. that's an 800 percent annual return for the bank 
Yeah, because you're talking about 30-year fixed rate loan. Uh, they already worked all the math out. And yep. they know exactly how much they're getting as far as interest, which is more currency for them to make more money on. Wow. Yep. And so Nick H says this correctly. The key to the whole math is a surplus money every month. So the question just becomes, he's painting a nice, easy, round picture, but there are a lot of us that have variable salaries, variable compensation. And so there are nuances to what he has explained. And it's those nuances that can crush you if you don't understand this. And so I know that you've got a second video from, from this gentleman. And there were a couple of things in that next video that I want to just pick apart because I want people to understand, like, he's saying go all variable. And right now, that's probably not the smartest thing to do. But there's other ways to do this. There's other ways to play this game. So if you don't mind, Omar, start up the other video, and then we yeah. can share in terms of a different way to do this. Okay. Well, if you have a... Here's how you finance your home with a HELOC, even if you already have a mortgage. So like most people, John and Mary have purchased their home, and they have financed it with a 30-year mortgage, $400,000 balance at 4.5%. And they realize that that's going to cost them $704,000. So they want to save some money. They want to save some time. They want to pay the home off in five to 10 years. And so they go out and they hear about the HELOC strategy. So they go to the bank and they say, look, I need a HELOC. I want to pay off my mortgage. And they say, all right, we'll give you 90% of the value of your home. And because this home is 500000 you have a $450,000 limit. So how do you pay off your mortgage? Well, it's essentially a balance transfer. This mortgage is going, and it's going to go into this HELOC. This HELOC has paid off 100% of the mortgage. There is no more mortgage. But you still have to pay back the HELOC, obviously. I get a lot of comments about that. So now you have a $400,000 balance on the HELOC instead of a $400,000 balance on the, home ec uh, on the mortgage. Essentially, this is a balance transfer. You pay off your mortgage using your home equity line of credit. And then what you do is you drive all of your income into your HELOC and then you pay for expenses out of your HELOC as well. In the leftover every month, that income gap, that spread is what pays down the principal amount. Okay, so number one, he is in a state where they can do 90% loan to value. A lot of the states can do it. We live in Texas. I'm gonna stick with Texas. We can only do 80% loan to value. So that's part one. All right. Small, small nuance. I'm not dragging him down for that. Where this can bite you in the butt. I've got a client that they are two W-2 employees. Both of the, the husband and wife, they both switch jobs between the time that they started and when they ended. And when they first came to me and we were talking about this, it was, it was down when the interest rates were super low and it was going to work. Okay. It wasn't going to, it wasn't going to accelerate and pay off the home in five to 10 years. Like he's showing in the example, because they didn't have a ton of extra cash flow. But then what happened in 2022 interest rates started to go up. And so now all of this cash flow that they had is literally making them break even every month. So they're not going, they're not going ahead. They're also not running behind. But if some one off items come up, then all of a sudden you're taking a little bit more equity out and it can slowly start to go backwards on them. And even in, and, and trust me, I was not one to say, let's go for it. Let's do it. I was one like, eh. next thing I know, they're like, we got a heal. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> it's like, great. This is a this is a client I didn't want to inherit, but I've I've been there with them. It's still working just fine, but it's just one of those that there's the major catch. Okay, and so is there a way to do this as a hybrid model? 
And the answer is yes, all right? Which is you can keep your first position mortgage and you can get a line of credit below it, all right? Which means in second position or junior position. Now, is there a greater risk that the HELOC will close, get closed on you when it's in second position? The answer is yes, because that second bank is in a lot more risk if you start to default. Okay, and that's what happened back in 08, 09. All right. One way to be able to play this game, let's go back to his example of let's say you have a $400,000 mortgage. Let's just say that you have $100,000 sitting in the bank. Okay, you got this. It's a 3% interest rate. You got 28 years left. Here's something you've probably never heard of before. It's called a recast. Have you ever heard of that, Omar? I have heard that with lenders. Um, okay, sweet. So, so let's just say that you got that four hundred thousand. It's twenty. It's you know, you, it was back at three percent. So your payment on that for thirty years is let's call it fifteen hundred bucks a month. It's it's going to be really cheap. All right, but you have this extra hundred grand and now you hear this idea of like using the line of credit. How can we play this game together? What you do is say, you call up your mortgage and say, I wanna put $100,000 against the mortgage. I like the interest rate of 3%. I'm okay that there's still 28 years left. What would my new payment be for the next 28 years? if my balance is now $300,000 tomorrow and not 400. And they may say, well, your new payment would go from 1500 down to 1100 a month. So great, we now save $400 a month. But we just lost all our liquidity. So now what do you do? Now you get the home equity line of credit. Because there's now $100,000 of equity. And so this is a way to use your savings to lower your monthly burn or increase your cash flow and then immediately turn around and be able to get the liquidity back. Okay. And then from there, what we now have is a $100,000 line of credit. And or in his case, it would be a $150,000 line of credit because he's using 90% loan to value. And now you can use what we call chunks of the line of credit and keep lowering that amortization table against the $300,000 mortgage. So you take like 20,000 out from the line of credit and now you just drop this to 280 and now you just have to worry about 20,000 bucks and play the game there. And because it's such a small balance that you're playing this moving money game that he showed in the first video, you are using simple interest on the 20,000 to take care of the amortized interest on the $300,000 debt. And you just keep recycling this back and forth and back and forth until you get this paid off in, you know, five to 10 years. Hmm. I mean, it, it's one of those, yes, it is mind bending in terms of how do you play all the, put all these pieces together. And as we shared at the beginning, I'm a dentist, more than half of my clients are dentists, okay? We did this whole recast and pulling money out of the business and moving this, this dentist student loans into the line of credit. There, before we started working together, their monthly personal expenses was $17,000 a month. Over 10,000 of it was in fixed debt payments between the car the student loans and his house. By rearranging everything, we got his $17,000 monthly budget down to $10,000. That 10,000 of fixed payments now went down to $3,300 a month. We freed up $80,000 a year in his personal budget just by learning how to use these pieces together. Okay, so it is possible. You don't have to go whole hog in terms of what you're doing because like with, with this dentist I'm talking about, that would have been a giant nut that is, that is being conveyed on, the, on, on a floating interest rate. 
if interest rates started to go up from eight and a half to nine, nine and a half, ten, this guy would have come down to Austin and beat the crap out of me, saying, what did you do to me? But we played the game smartly by he was already comfortable with his higher mortgage payment. We lowered the heck out of that. And if something happened from a dental perspective that he couldn't work anymore, we didn't have this giant floating debt. We had a very, very tiny amount with a lot of cash cushion in terms of how we played the game. So that is how we can play this safely versus the potential risk of what he's showing there. Do you mind if we go back to that video so we could take a look at more of the comments? Because I feel that's where the, the that's gold where the gold is. is. <laughs> yeah, I mean the comments is where people are, are asking more questions and more of the pain points that I was when I was looking at this video, like the very first one. I think. Can you see that? Yeah. What are, what are the risks involved with the strategy? Number one, you have to have the cash flow. If your income is not greater than your expenses on a consistent basis, this, no, this does not work. Period. End of story. And the second one is the variable interest rate. I told you about the client that I inherited, okay? If you don't have enough buffer between your income and expenses, this really is not, this should not be your go-to strategy, okay? I have had some clients, when I met them, they were literally break-even. Every month they were break-even. I'm thinking of one client in particular. And by doing this, again, conservatively, smartly, and having plenty of extra cash just as a buffer, we were able to free up $3,600 a month. Okay? That's a hell of a lot of wiggle room for that. Right? But you have to know, you, you have to see the bigger picture and have to and know what you're doing. Average interest rate on HELOC loans is really the prime rate. So right now, that's about 8.5% as we're recording this, the end of February 2024. Essentially, you're saying put all of your savings into paying down the home. Yes. Yes. Your house is your checking account. Why? Because it's an open-ended tool. The money I put in today, I can get back out tomorrow. Just like the money you put into your checking account or into your savings account today, you can pull out tomorrow. It's the exact same thing. It's open-ended, not a fixed, closed-ended, titanium-safe loan that you are used to with your house, with your car, with your student loans. 90% um, of the equity, not 90% of the This guy's an idiot. Um, oh my, da, da, da. Let's see. You can't replace the mortgage. He's an idiot. You're correct. No, you're M. Huggins 2857. You're absolutely wrong. Um, what if the bank closes the HELOC or reduces the available credit limit? Yes, this is a risk, okay? And the mega banks, your Crank of America, your Hell's Cargo, your Mace Bank, and your Capital Ones. Yeah. I heard it 15 years ago, and I've got buddies of mine who are mortgage brokers around the country. It has happened again with those mega banks, which is why you don't use the mega banks to do this. You use small regional banks, you use local banks, community banks, you use credit unions because they do not overreact. See, when, when Hell's Cargo has to make a rule, they have to do it nationwide. They don't care about you individually, okay? But with the community banks and the credit unions, they are looking in terms of, are you personally being a good steward of the line? If you are, we don't have to do a damn thing. If you're not, like 15 years ago, where people just got stupid with it, yeah, they closed it down on a case-by-case -case basis. So, but that's a fantastic question. I know we're coming up on 30 minutes. I don't know how fast you need me to go. Melissa Smiley, what about the interest? Is 9%, mortgage is only 2.75. I think I explained in terms of you can keep both. But the recast is the fun way to do this. Um, trade your 2.5% mortgage for a credit card. Well, not a credit card, but 9 to 11%. The answer is yes, you are. But it's also the, la the last comment I'll make, Omar. It is understanding that this is simple interest versus an amortized loan, where that payment, if you put 50 grand into your house to lower that mortgage and pay this off faster, 
What happens to your payment the next month? Nothing. It's the exact same payment the next month. You just lost your liquidity. When you're using a line of credit and you're doing simple interest, I go back to your house is your checking account. The money I put into it today, I can get back out tomorrow. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to uh, for can you explain what a recast means? Yeah. So one more time, let's just say you have a fantastic you got one of those bargain basement interest rates back in 2020, 2021. You're at 2.75 or let's just call it 3%. All right. You've got your fixed payment, but you've got a lot of cash just sitting there and you're like, how can I play this game that Howard's talking about? All right. And so let's go back to it's a $500,000 house. We're in Texas. We can, play, we can manipulate 80% of the equity of your home. So we can play with $400,000. Your balance right now, your mortgage balance is at 280,000, okay? And you have 80,000 in cash. You go to the bank, you go to the, you go to the institution that now has your mortgage put because it's probably been sold 17 times, all right? And you say, I want to put $80,000 against my house. I want to lower that mortgage balance from 280 down to 200. I still want that 3% interest rate. I have no problem. There's still 27 years left to go. What will be the new payment for the next 27 years if my balance is lowered to 200,000? And they will tell you it will go from 1380 a month down to 1000. And now you're saving $380 a month. The cost for the recast, I've literally heard zero. I've heard 200 bucks. So we're not going through a full mortgage, a full refinance. They're keeping all of the contract documents. They're just literally scratching out the line of starting balance and now new balance and now the calculation of the new interest rate. Mm. Or I'm sorry, it's the new payment with, I, let me rephrase that. It is the new payment based on the new balance with the same interest rate. We're not changing interest rates. We're just we're just smushing the balance down faster and jumping down that amortization table. But we're not even doing that. We're just lowering the payment. We're increasing our cash flow. And then part two is now that we've lowered the overall debt, now we can go back and play with the equity and that's where the line of credit comes in. Wow. So I it's I know this sounds like a very like case by case on um, if it's applicable and if the numbers make sense, but having worked with past clients, is there kind of like a profile or kind of like a, a criteria people can see if they can if it makes sense to reach out to you where they, you know, it, this is a viable option? Yeah, so my website is financiallyled.com. There is a link there for an ebook. And at the end of an ebook, there are two pages there that should take you about five minutes to fill out. One is on the personal side, one is if you're a business owner. I'll do the calculations for you. I don't need many numbers to tell you approximately how you know, can this work for you, all right? So just go to that, print it out, put the numbers in, take a picture, text it to me, email it to me, and I'll just let you know, I'll say, yeah, this, from what you gave me, it looks like this could work for you, and here's how soon you could be debt-free, or not right now, but let me just tell you why this isn't gonna work right now. And this is what I'm here to do. This is the way that I can serve, and, you know, just, Thank you for the opportunity, Omar, just to share in terms of, you know, how you can do this differently, how you can get to your version of freedom far sooner than you ever anticipated. And this can, anybody within the United States, if they're watching this, can reach out to you and you can work with them? Internationally, actually. Yeah. Wow. So anybody yeah. international or, or here in the U.S.? Get a U.S. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's the, the key to all of it is, can we get an open-ended tool like a credit card 
like a line of credit that we can have money move through the system. That's the key. And if people want to read, reach out to you and do like a virtual kind of consultation, that's also something that you provide as well? Yep, 100% free. Okay. Yeah, just because it's one of those that this might be a brand new concept to you. It, it's I can't just feed people to the wolves and say, yeah, go have fun and do it. I mean, there are some people that do that. There's not many of us that teach this, okay? My way is to be a guide, all right? But first we have to get clarity on if it's gonna work for you. So that's why the clarity call is 100% free. I'll get, I'll pull the numbers out of you. I'll do the breakdown, come back. You and, and if you're married, your spouse together, you both have to be on the call because there's no way you're gonna be able to convey this. Trust me, it's mm -hmm. always a disaster. Um, and then from there, it's just, it's either this sounds great and you do it, do it yourself, or this sounds great, can you help us? Either way, or this sounds way too bizarre, we can't wrap our brains around it, and great, virtual handshake, it's all good. Wow, fantastic. I will definitely include that in the description so you guys can have easy access to reach out to Howard and, see, and check out the ebook if you want further clarification or schedule, what do you call it, a clarify? Clarity. Call. Clarity call, I love that. Okay. Yes, we are. I'm, we are wrapping things up here. Thank you, Howard. I appreciate you. We'll do this again soon. All right. Thanks, Omar.